Today I read to you um, probably one of the longest lessons of the Christian year. It comes from John 11. I'll be reading verses 1 through 45. I read today from the New International Version. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus 
wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with the stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Folks, it's not hard to imagine what a difficult and painful world we live in these days. It really isn't. Natural disasters happen all the time. Mudslots covering entire towns. Young people, some in our own community, get struck down with disease. Some even succumb to death. Our own community here in Mercer County in Princeton is one that is plagued with problems such as child pornography, with prostitution, with drugs. The world around us seems to be on the brink of war time and time again. Malaria kills a human being in our world once every minute or so. Millions of people in the world we live in, folks, have to walk over five miles to get a jug of clean water. How many of you have some spare change on you this morning? Either in your pocket or, you know, perhaps in your purse. How many? Just spare change. Realize, those of you who raised your hands, you are richer than 98% of the world's population. 98%. This is a rough, rough world where sickness and death and all sorts of evil invade on a regular basis. This week, this week here at the church in the heart of Princeton, we had over 12 requests for help from our Community Emergency Assistance Fund. Over 12. We had more than one homeless person, one homeless family, looking for shelter this week. It's a world where, where death seems to reign. If not physical death, 
than just the death that comes to the spirit of humankind when so much bad is around. With all of this grief and disaster in the world, you know, I am glad that we have a story like the one we just read in John's Gospel. Now, I am not here this morning to try and convince you of whether you believe Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead or not. Folks, you're either going to believe that or you're not. No amount of convincing on my part is going to change your mind. That's a matter of the Spirit. It's a matter of faith. But I am glad that we have this story, despite the questions it may raise for some people. I'm glad we have this story because it paints a picture of Jesus that we really need. See, most of the time we think that John's gospel, this, this fourth gospel, the one that's so different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the way that he goes about telling the story. Sometimes we think that John's gospel is the one that shows Jesus as the most spiritual or in the most spiritual light that he has shown in the gospels. But think about this story here. In this story, Jesus goes to see a dead friend and to visit with that friend's family. It's a story where Jesus greets personally the, sister, the sisters of this deceased, and he offers them words of hope. This is a story where we are told Jesus weeps. Does that not show us how human he was? This is a story that shows us that Jesus wept because of his love for Lazarus. Now most of the time when we think about Jesus and love or God and love, we, we, we think about using the Greek word agape, which is a very deep spiritual unconditional type of love. But John uses a very special word here, a different Greek word for love, philea. It's the type of, of love that is shared between friends. The type of love that is shared between those who, who know one another on a personal basis and who care about each other deeply. This isn't some spiritualized type of love that Jesus had for Lazarus. He lost a dear friend. Only a human being knows what that feels like. Actually, if there is any story in any of the Gospels about the adult Jesus that shows how human Jesus is, I believe it is this story. Jesus knew what it was like to live in a world that is just like the one we live in today. One that can be torn apart at the seams by the very power of sin let loose in the world. One that can be destroyed by death in a moment's notice. Whether that death comes through disease, through disaster, through loss of spirit, even loss of spirit in loved ones, mourning for those they've lost. At the same time, though, no story in the Gospels shows the power that Jesus had to work in this very world 
more than this story. Lazarus was dead, folks. Lazarus was dead for four days. And yet, into that dark and smelly tomb, this place where not many people would, would fear to go, dare to go, this tomb that held his body, Jesus looks into it, and Jesus calls, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus does. Jesus had talked to Mary and Martha about seeing their brother again in the resurrection that was to come. But then Jesus turns everything around and brings life back to them right then and there. In the very place they were experiencing death, Jesus brings life. Imagine, imagine the possibilities, my brothers and sisters, of what Jesus can do in the face of death that surround us, no matter what they look like. Imagine the possibilities. I want to share with you a video that uh, many of you have probably seen this week, but there's a reason we, as Christians, imagine these possibilities. And it goes beyond just what Jesus did at Lazarus to. It's about who we are as people. Why do we as Christians talk so much about Jesus' death? Everywhere we look, in churches, around people's necks, everywhere, death seems to be yelling at us. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Why do we talk so much about death as Christians? You know he really lived a good life. Yeah, he sure did. Is the world ultimately a cold place? Does death really have the last word? Perhaps death does have the last word. Perhaps despair is the best response in a world filled with fear and corruption. Light seems to be squeezed out by the darkness. It's easy to be cynical in a world filled with death. Sometimes it seems we relish being cynical about death. But Christ doesn't speak so much about death. God only allows three days of such talk. Now, in Mark's gospel, Christ tells his followers three times, I must die. But he speaks 10 times about his resurrection. You see, Easter is Christ reminding us that God hasn't given up on us. The world matters. 
we matter. And uh, the violence, cynicism, hatred, and oppression, those things will not prevail and they cannot last. And just when you think it's over and lost, just when you think it can't possibly be put back together, hold on because God is doing a new thing. Renewing, regenerating, reintroducing, restarting, and restoring. Death isn't allowed in. Who is allowed in? Who is allowed to be renewed, restarted, and restored? We are, even us, the same people, only transform. Can you believe it? Resurrection! That God says, that uh, when the, the, the greed and oppression and cruelty that you see and witness all around you it seems like it's going to win, it is right then that resurrection occurs. And God wins. Christ wins. Resurrection. Oh. Easter people. Now God says to live like Easter people. People that know that death does not have the last word. People that live on this side of the resurrection. We are Easter people. We are Easter people. Happy Easter, Easter people. By the way, that was a special guest appearance by Jerry Linkus, who did the uh, cartwheel in the service there uh, in that video. Folks, imagine the possibilities. I mean, I know we are in the midst of the season of Lent, but there is a very good reason that we do not celebrate Lent on Sunday during the season of Lent. It's not counted as part of the season. It is a day to remember Easter, to remind ourselves what is coming in the midst of this journey. We are resurrection people. We are Easter people. So imagine the possibility. We are people who have witnessed the power of the resurrection. All around us, there are people who are like Lazarus, walking out of the tomb, wrapped in clothes of death. And Jesus calls on us, those of us who know Jesus' humanity, who acknowledge his divinity, to set those people free. Because we know, we know the power of the resurrection. We are Easter people. When we think about the problems of clean water in this world, imagine the possibility. When we think about the plague that is malaria, imagine the possibility. When we think about the problem of violence in our world, imagine the possibilities with us as Easter people. When we get depressed over the problems of homelessness, drugs, child pornography in our very community, imagine the possibilities of Easter people tearing those grave clothes off of those who are bound by death. When we think of the great need of hungry people in, uh, and, and children in our community, when natural disasters strike, when those who are young or old get struck down with disease or death, imagine the possibility. Imagine the possibilities, my brothers and sisters, because we are 
Easter people. Even in the midst of Lent, we know that Easter is coming. Imagine the possibilities. As we come to a table, a table that has not been prepared by us, but a table that was prepared for us, where we receive just a crumb of bread and a, a drop of juice. But imagine the possibilities when we remember that we are Easter people, resurrection people, that the body which is broken is made whole in you. Amen? Let's see how much you remember of the video. We are? Easter people. We are? Easter people. We are Easter people. Let us give thanks to God in that way.